capability to service. We also understand that in order to deliver our best, we have to partner with training and consulting technology owners that are the best in the world. So we continue to ensure fruitful win-win relationships with these partners. And Chile works with a lot of local as well as multinational clients. In terms of branding, we distinguish ourselves as a consulting service that helps companies achieve change breakthroughs. The big difference is in the process in which we do this. We make sure that the dignity of the human person is respected. We remember that meeting with the country's president of a multinational company who is into uh, consumer goods, who shared with us the shift of his company's paradigm from castle to caravan. Welcoming globalization, this company understood that changes have to be welcomed and embraced with utmost consideration for people while balancing profits. We have worked with this food manufacturing consumer goods company based in Europe for over 15 years. This company has undergone many changes without a single labor case filed against them. Before we helped this company, I remember their plant manager in Kabuya was shot dead. So they approached us and said, we have many changes coming. Can you help us with your formula? And the formula is, while undergoing change, put the person at the center. These include closure, for example, of their noodles plant, sale of an ice cream factory to a third party, expansion of their coffee plant, setup of a global shared service, global shared services in uh, Philippines, and transfer from salesmen to third party distributors, among others. And today, we still continue to service them. So how to balance the objectives of the company and the good of the employees. Another case is uh, of an oil company. One day, we got, we got a call from the chairman of an oil company. He was concerned about the tough culture and low productivity of the refinery. He was worried about the future as their foreign partners were starting to express concerns. He asked us to help the executive committee of the refinery, and we introduced a leadership assessment and coaching program. Then moved on to a leadership and management program for all managers and supervisors. Later on, we launched with them the Rainbow Life program. As you know, uh, Anchila has developed a Rainbow Life program for companies. And I'd like to give credit to this, to, uh, to you, you remember King Seldran used to be the president of Coca-Cola Butler's Philippines. And he's a volunteer of the movement and he's now in heaven. And he called me and said, Tita, can you do a values program based on the rainbow? I said, I wouldn't touch that without permission. So I talked to Joe, the responsible of uh, Focolari at that time, and then said, Joe said, go ahead. <laughs> and I said, oh, no, that's a... <laughs> okay, so we have now launched the Rainbow Life program for over 100 companies in the Philippines. And you could say that those who embraced it best were the Japanese companies. Yeah. You know why? Okay, I trained in Japan in total quality and I decided to include some of the total quality practices like Kaizen, you know, like uh, 7S and all the other practices related to the colors. So uh, what we did here, later we helped set up the total quality management system, introduced company-wide values, Rainbow Life, and a behavior-based safety program that dramatically changed the authoritarian climate to one that is more people-oriented. The past years, we have seen the setup of a new petrochemical plant and another refinery, almost doubling the number of people working in the refinery. And Joe is the key consultant 
because Joe, my son, a while ago, is the key consultant to the refinery because all their engineers are millennials. Okay. <laughs> So recently, a client of many years engaged in Abaca Manufacturing called to say that they needed strategic planning as the majority of the ownership has been acquired by their key Japanese client. We understood that it was important not just to shape the plans for the future, but also to create a deeper understanding and working management norms sensitive to both Filipino and Japanese cultures. So the three-day program resulted in a very quick transition towards a new era of collaboration in the new management team while setting their strategic goals and action plans. It was beautiful. The Japanese uh, owners worked very hard. They were young people. So they worked very hard during the day, and they did a lot of uh, dancing in the evening with the other employees. So you can see they were millennials. So we have worked for the past 15 years with the largest telecom company as it moved from the dominant landline company to wireless, then still acquiring another company. And I think we have to thank them for the connectivity of this workshop, of this conference. After the signing of the legal papers for mergers and acquisitions, Angela was asked to assist in the transition. We spent over six months helping to develop new organization structures and designs, conducting planning sessions, doing and leading change programs for leadership norms, conduct of training, coaching, job fairs, and entrepreneurship programs for leavers, you know, people who are let go, programs for stayers because they are missing their colleagues at work, in streamlining processes, multitasking, developing and implementing communications plan. Today, it continues to lead its industry. Today, they are the biggest bank. They acquired three other big banks. While the acquisitions were happening, they suspended the implementation of the retire at 60 rule. It was felt that the value of the acquisition can be optimized by retaining the senior officers. However, the middle managers were starting to become restless as promotions slowed down. And Sheila was invited to help solve the challenge. The solution was to manage the restoration of the retire at 60 rule, but done in a manner that will be sensitive to the senior officers. With top management, and Sheila suggested a one-year transition program. Affected officers were told in December and the effective date of retirement was the next December. Why December? Because they will be surrounded by their beloved relatives and they could tell them, I'm retiring next year so I can visit you in the US or visit you somewhere else. Affected officers, every quarter they had programs in finding another job if they want or turning entrepreneur, going back to school if they wish or doing community work or investing retirement money and retirement coaching. Today, the program continues. We have heard only grateful remarks from the retiring senior officers. Two rivals in the shipping industry were engaged in very stiff competition. The smaller one with foreign funding acquired the bigger one. So the new owner commissioned us to handle the merger. It involved restructuring everything from port management, okay, to, uh, to the sales offices. And as you can see, the rivalry continued even after the merger. So the thing is, how do we humanize? How do we humanize? How do we make them trust, trust each other? So how can we make sure that there's no slump in productivity because of the uncertainty of the beginning? Today, the company has moved forward with, after all the programs, with its new company branding and robust strategic plans, moving forward in profitability and productivity. In all these experiences, we learned the criticality of balancing tasks with concern for people, and the continuous need to learn and acquire world-class quality interventions that work. 
Now, let me share with you an experience working with government. We are hesitant to work with government at the beginning because of stories we usually hear with regards to unethical and bureaucratic practices. However, I was struck by a question asked by a friend in Focolare, my responsible, who asked me, how come you're doing a lot for the private sector, but why don't you help the government and be at the service of your country? In the same period, we were asked by a foreign-funded facility to help by bidding for some of the projects. And so, with much enthusiasm and passion, we said, we will conquer. <laughs> we will conquer all the bureaucratic processes. So we conducted, for example, strategic planning for the Department of Education nationwide, developing a strategic planning handbook and training 600 internal DepEd facilitators. It was an arduous process because of the seven, what is it, K to 10? K, K to 12? Okay, K to 12, they were not tapped because uh, there was this uh, plan that was rolled out from the center. So we ask ourselves, now what do we do with all those facilitators? We said we have to keep them excited about their, about their skills. So we created a Facebook okay, account so that all the 600 could display. Okay, every time they facilitate, a workshop, a meeting, or anything at all, to please post it in the Facebook page with rules coming from DepEd. And you know, up to now, they are posting. Imagine 600 people posting every day. Okay, so in the end, they were telling us it was indeed a memorable experience, and that up to today, they are still practicing their skills, even though the original plan didn't happen, right? So this was followed by a bid we won for Pag-asa. This is the, in the area of strategic planning. We experienced much fulfillment when we saw how the plans strengthened the organization. You know how important it is in the Philippines because this is the weather forecasting agency. And uh, we realized how effective they've been, right? And how many lives they have saved because of the very good plans that were actually implemented. So we also do a lot of competency-based human resource systems for the, and we did assessment for the Mines and Geosciences Bureau, also did for the Department of Social Welfare and uh, Development. We installed a competency-based selection and recruitment system. So we are sure that the social workers today really meet very good qualifications. We also trained the Civil Service Commission on competency-based training and development facilitation. We also worked with the Department of Local Governments, okay, proposing a more updated and more responsive organizational communication systems. And even for the Bureau of Internal Revenues, my good friends, you know, a small story, we were sued by the Bureau of Internal Revenue, right? They filed a case against us because they wanted to send a signal to consulting companies. And Anchila being letter A, okay, so, so they pursued us. And uh, in the end, of course, uh, it was dismissed by the court. And uh, I asked uh, the lawyers of the other side, would you, like to, would you like to get a lift to go out of the courtroom? And they apologized for what happened. But they got us as consultant. So we improved their human resource processes and recently also concluded for the Department of Trade and Industry their middle management development programs. How did we fare? with much prayer and perseverance, because you never know when the, program, when the project will end. We completed the projects that required much patience, okay, from the project teams. I think we also grew in sanctity. <laughs> One time, we completed the project, but our final payment was very much delayed. We suspected that the processing was being slowed down 
for us to come across with money to speed up the process. Then we met together as a group and saw in unity, what will we do? Then we remembered the biblical parable of the corrupt judge and the widow. We decided to do the same tactics as the widow. We assigned one of our finance staff to report daily at the client's office, simply asking the question, where are our papers, sir, ma'am? What do you need from us for them to move forward? It was a very effective technique because after three days, our check was released. <laughs> okay, so today, for both private and government sectors, we continue to look forward with much care for relationship and adding value. Indeed, the philosophy of the economy of communion when lived produces amazing results. Thank you. Thank you, Tita. Thank you, Tita. So, very inspiring stories about humanizing not only your organization, but other organizations as well as a consulting company. Now, we move to another type of business. Uh, it's an engineering company. So, we would like to call it uh, chairman. Uh, Mr. Vic Lajos uh, for Kalayaan Engineering Company Inc. Can I be quicker? Today, I'd like to share with you an experience we made in Kalayan Engineering on how we tried We are a specialty contractor involved in commercial installation of air conditioning, fire protection, plumbing, and mechanical works. Uh, was supposed, I was supposed to show you a video, but in the interest of time, and since we already saw the video yesterday, we will forego it. The company was established by my late father in 1966. And I, together with my brother, who is right there behind, Ricky, and my cousin Joey and some other friends, uh, are now running the second generation, the company a second generation. If you remember the video yesterday, Kalayaan is largely dependent on labor. We employ about 2,000 people nationwide, and this accounts for up to 30% of our operating cost. Labor is used in two central prefabrication workshops located in our main office in Manila, and our branch office in Cebu, respectively. However, the major, workforce, the major workforce is utilized in various project job sites during installation activities. Kalayaan believes that man is not only the greatest resource, but is the center and most important part of the business. This is why our core values place an emphasis on relationship among others and we try to do our share of developing our workforce through training mentoring as well as profit sharing schemes with the end objective of providing a better quality of life for them and their families some practices we'd like to share with you today include a safety and health program the profit sharing how we try to provide entrepreneur ex, uh, opportunities and a mentoring program. Every construction site is a high, high injury risk environment and our first responsibility to our workforce is to provide a safe and healthy work environment. A documented health and safety management system is in place which is certified and assessed to the occupational health and safety 
assessment series or OSHAS 18001 9000 9001 this is our commitment to having good health and safety practices as a culture in our workplace personal protective equipment including steel toed safety shoes hard hats safety glasses gloves safety vests and masks are provided to each employee free of charge in order to make this a culture in all in our job sites we start each day by conducting a safety health and toolbox meeting for 15 minutes i make a small parenthesis uh, this is done in all the job sites it starts out with a three minute stretching or calisthenics exercise ah it starts out with a prayer and then some exercises and then we use the remainder for safety reminders to make them understand that safety rules are enforced because we want them to return to their families in one piece alive and without injury just as they left just as they left their homes that morning aside from this we also use a communication and effective communication tool which we learned from how chiara communicates to her family you know this is through the collegamento every year after our business plan is conducted we have a tape message which we show to all the job sites which more or less will be the theme for the new year we also make use of these toolbox meetings to create various health awareness and sickness prevention by discussing topics like high blood pressure dealing with headaches making sure to drink a lot of water especially in these days where the temperatures are abnormally high during summer full-time safety men are employed in each job site and in larger construction job sites the services of a full-time nurse is also provided the company invests in the development and training of our safety men and nurses through programs for emergency preparedness and formation of an emergency response team blood donation programs are also held in partnership with the philippine red cross and partnerships with hospitals for health care the health and safety program of the company is an investment made for the welfare of the employees and mind you it is not cheap however we believe that an accident can get to be even more expensive especially if it leads to loss of life or limb but more than this we do it because we give value to our workforce the main source of income of kalayaan are the commercial building projects where we undertake the installation of the mechanical works each project each project is managed by a project team and function and work independently from each other performance of the projects are monitored by the project managers therefore we are dependent on technical engineers who run the project team and skilled tradesmen who perform and lead teams to accomplish the work one of the biggest challenges we have is the migration of our engineers and skilled workers to seek out better employment opportunities the so-called OFWs or overseas Filipino workers are said to be the real heroes of the country leaving their motherland and family behind to work to work and contribute to a combined amount of remittances of about 24 to 25 billion US dollars a year which make up for about 9.8 percent of the country's GDP unfortunately it is also their families which are put at a higher risk of being dysfunctional because of the long periods of being away from them moreover the robust construction industry has presented problems in providing the much needed skills for the workers for kalayaan the problem was simply put as follows how can we provide better employment opportunities to our good engineers and skilled workers so that they do not have to seek employment overseas and unnecessarily be aware from their from their loved ones it was clear that if they were to stay 
they had to be paid well. But can we still be competitive if we pay them well? Three, the profit sharing scheme that works in this manner. When Kalayaan is awarded a new project, a project team is organized and all the details of the project are discussed with them. In most companies in the industry, the project financials are never disclosed with the project team and they are only given the information as the need arises. The novelty of this scheme is that the project financials are openly discussed with the entire project team. The team is then given an overall budget, uh, an overall budget target, no? with the goal of maximizing project savings. The team is challenged to operate efficiency, efficiently, do value engineering. Value engineering is when you study the plans and find out how to do things uh, more effectively and save costs without necessarily doing any shortcuts or any or uh, shortchanging the project specifications. We have to make sure that the quality standards are followed and that the project specifications are followed and so that at project completion, savings in budget are the profits that are shared not only with the project team, but with other departments. Within the project team and departments, a performance rating system is in place so that bonuses are shared based on performance. After three years of the program, and undergo, after undergoing several fine-tuning policies, the results have been phenomenal. Some members of the project team actually got compensations that would be equal or even higher net income, net incomes comparable to what they would have received as an OFW. We saw higher productivity rates in some projects increase by as much as 20%. Material pilferage was practically stopped and wastage had also decreased substantially. Even the scrap materials at the site were properly disposed and sold wherever possible. A major contributor of the success of the program is the relationships that are built among the project team members. The culture of sharing has actually been possessed by the project team such that they share profits even with the key, play, uh, even with the key players in the workforce. It is common to see that even the warehouse men and site utility people also get a share of the pie. We even have an experience. What happened? Seems you lost it. Okay. I remember a story uh, of one such success story. Across our office is cash and carry. It's a mall. They have a security guard there. And in the security guard has a wife who has a small carinderia uh, where they sell food. One of the children, when he was born, eventually grew up, finished mechanical engineering, stayed with us now who is working. And is now one of the uh, more successful project in charge who benefit from this kind of uh, profit sharing scheme. No? Anyway, so I was saying the pro there was also an, uh, an experience where the profits were even shared with other project teams no? who did not perform as well. In spite of the relatively successful profit sharing scheme that we implemented, we still could not catch up with the demand for skilled workers and engineers. So about two years ago, we were forced to come out with another scheme. No? And this is employing subcontractors. We started identifying potential subcontractors to do our projects, but made sure that they complied with all regulatory requirements. We limited our choice to licensed subcontractors. One of our responsibilities was to make sure that they would get the project at a profitable price. 
we went as far as helping some of them who fell short of our requirements to professionalize by encouraging them to get bis their businesses registered and even obtain contractor's license from the Philippine Contractors Accreditation Board. While this program was doing okay in its first year, we thought of ways to further improve the program. Motivated only by love, we started to rethink and find a way for people who have achieved a certain level in our company to grow even more by encouraging them to become small entrepreneurs. A responsible foreman who has worked with a team in our projects would have a natural advantage of having the necessary qualifications, being familiar with our quality standards, policies, and even our corporate values. They are then encouraged to become a small entrepreneur by being a subcontractor. Kalayan's responsibility is to guide and accompany them in the first project. First of all, by making sure that they get the project at a profitable price. Okay. Then, uh, normally, there is no problem in complying with the technical requirements and their professional skill levels are beyond doubt. They are, however, challenged by the skills needed to become a successful entrepreneur. And this is where we try to help them. Little by little, like little children learning how to walk, we have to take them by the hand. For their first project, all subcontractor members of the team are recorded as Kalayaan employees to make sure that all employee benefits like the social security system, feel health, pag-ibig, and the 13-month pay are properly paid and provided for. Since they are starting out, we help them with the capital and provide them with all the necessary tools and equipment, like welding machine. The initial investments are advanced by Kalayaan for the subcontractor. A progress payment scheme is adopted such that at 25%, 50%, 75%, and 100% completion, we will pay them what is due them after deducting all advances uh, in salaries and capital expenses. Hopefully, at the end of the project, they would have earned a modest profit. For the next project, the new entrepreneur team hopefully has enough resources to formalize his company. He is then encouraged to register his company with the Department of Trade and Industry and secure a contractor's license, and therefore become more independent. Since Filipinos place a high values in their families, their family members are encouraged to do simple bookkeeping for the company. Eventually, their organization matures and grows and are given bigger opportunities. Again, Kalayan's responsibility is to make sure that they do not run out of jobs. One success story of this program is that of Raymond Cruz, a former project in charge of Kalayaan who has successfully set up his company, Smart Rec Builders, using a project team who were all former employees of Kalayaan. It was a joy to see him buy his first car. Now he does subcontract work even with our competitors. Mind you, he, me he plays a main game of golf. Over the past years, we had an experience with some of the staff who had expressed an interest in further developing their skills. Therefore, the company had supported them finan by financing their training and even schooling. One time, we invested in the training of four of our staff to undergo training as, masters pl as master plumbers. After the training, all of them successfully passed the board for master plumbers. Mercy Pascal started with us as an assistant keeper and worked her way up, is now assistant admin manager after completing her MBA course. Romel Alivara, who is here with us today, no, uh, started out as a CAD operator in one of our projects. He is now assistant vice president for marketing and engineering. 
Because of these success stories, we thought of institu institutionalizing and developing a mentoring program, which we hope to launch before the end of the year. It's a work in progress. The concept of the program is relatively simple. Every employee should be mentored by a more skilled employee. Wherever possible, a more skilled employee should mentor a subordinate. Mentoring is an art that not everyone can possess. We have seen highly skilled able to pass on the skill to others successfully. Likewise, we have seen less skilled people but are more efficient in training their subordinates. The entry level of an employee would be hired as a utility man or a helper who would not possess any skills. The idea is that a newly, hired, a newly hired unskilled employee is partnered with a more skilled employee who will be his mentor. After each project or within a certain time, the mentor may recommend the unskilled employee for promotion, which is verified through a skills assessment practical trait test. If successful, the mentor is promoted to a semi-skilled level and the mentor is likewise given a monetary bonus. Likewise, a semi-skilled is also expected to learn from a more skilled mentor while he is expected to mentor an entry-level person. When the semi-skilled matures and depending on his job assessment, he may even, uh, he may even uh, be recommended for further formal training to prepare him for testing through a Technical Education and Skills Development Authority, TESTA, which is, an, which is a test, which is a government, uh, they have several accredited testing agencies. Upon passing the assessment, he is elevated to a skilled tradesman where he gets an opportunity to be promoted to a lead man through another trade test. The lead man can still go up the ladder to become a foreman or a supervisor. A similar mentoring program is in the development stage for a cadet engineer who has recently graduated from college to become a project engineer. These young engineers can look forward to a lot of growth and career with, their, with the company as they can be eventually promoted to a project in charge position, a project manager, or even an area manager. There are also lateral opportunities to other departments such as the supply chain, engineering, testing and commissioning, and service and maintenance. I'd like to go over some of the impacts of the program. For Kalayaan, it may mean less profits because they are ultimately shared. But this is a price the company is more than happy to pay for because of the social impact that it provides. For the labor force, the team is motivated because the mentoring system becomes a natural catalyst for building relationships. The profit sharing system and the opportunity to eventually become entrepreneurs make the employees think twice before going overseas to seek better employment. This enables them to stay with their families in the country where relationships with the family are nurtured and naturally protected. Last but not least, the program promotes inclusive growth because of the true human development that occurs, empowering them to improve and giving them opportunities to have better income and provide a better future for their families. With this, I'd like to end the presentation and thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Vic and uh, Tita, for this afternoon. Uh, we have decided to dispense with the open forum this afternoon, and maybe it can be tackled in your respective breakout rooms. Because at this point, what we want to do is give instructions for the breakouts. Okay? So can we show them the breakout? There. These are the groupings that we are going to have. The entrepreneurs, which are the biggest group, they will stay here in this auditorium. The professionals, the youth, the students, the GOs, NGOs, and all the others will move to the dining hall where we have our meals. 
Uh, the reason we are going there is because we are going to try and simulate uh, how to generate ideas for a project. No? And we're going to be using a technology which uh, the, the uh, promoters have graciously allowed us to do this. And this is through the auspices of Agila. No? And then the last group will be the academe who will continue to meet in room 10 in level one in the you you were here in this meeting room before okay so do we understand each other this is where we are going to break out this afternoon but before we move can i give you some instructions because for many of you particularly the ones in the dining room you are no longer coming back after the breakout separated for two hours approximately so it's 3 15 to 5.15. At 5.15, we will have to uh, start moving to go to Terra Moy for our Barrio Fiesta celebration. Now, I understand that some of you who are from one Tagay Thai place will want to go by one Tagay place to be able to get dressed or freshen up or whatever. So, happen there will be 10 jeepneys in jeepneys they're going to be the one that are going to take us to teramoy but three of the jeepneys are specifically labeled for one tagay thai place and those are the ones that the one tagay thai people can take there's only three of them so you'll have to go all together don't let don't leave anybody behind because there's no one who's going to take them anymore okay so the three jeepneys that are labeled one tagay thai place you will be dropped at one tagay thai for a quick change over but only hopefully for 15 to 20 minutes okay can you make it yeah okay at that time and then you will go back down because the jeepneys will wait for you, okay? And we would like to wait for everybody and not leave anybody behind. So uh, we, we count on everyone to please um, remember your buddies, whoever were riding with you so that you can count and make sure nobody was left. And so three jeepneys are specifically dedicated to one Tagay Thai place. We'll bring them there wait for them a bit until they dress, and then we'll bring them now to Teramoy. The other jeepneys will be here in the dining hall. So when you're done with the academe and with the entrepreneurs, you will have to go up to the, the, play, the dining room place to pick up your seven other jeepneys, which will take you to Teramoy. Okay. Um, okay, just before everyone goes, I need to see Kyoko. Uh, we, uh, we please go to that small room, Kyoko. Professor Joseph Moon of Korea. Professor Moon? Yes, if you be just in that small room at the side. And uh, Jin Gio Tantoko. I'm already getting tongue-tied with the G. Yes, to that room, please. Uh, Epoy Filomena from uh, Malaysia. Malaysia. Filomena. Oh, oh, oh. Yes. If we can uh, meet here first while the group meetings are going on. Very quickly. Maybe 15, 20 minutes. Okay. There's a small room here. Yes. Yeah. Okay, there's one more um, I am supposed to clear with you. We have prepared a list of all the participants with your email addresses. And we wanted to get clearance. If anyone in particular does not want his email to be included, we will remove. But otherwise, we will, uh, we will put everyone in the list unless you say so, so that we can be able to give the email addresses of everyone in this in this congress to you 
so that you will be able to contact anybody you wish to contact, okay? Is all the instructions are clear? For those who are going to the incubation, the one where we're going to think of the ideas and how we're going to make those ideas come true, from here, as you walk up, you may want to think already, what business idea have I thought about at some time between before and now that I would like to use to study in this particular exercise? Because it is a methodology that is going to be able to help us. No? So I asked for a list earlier, but nobody submitted. So maybe as you walk up, you can think of some kind of project that you have thought you would like. I'm sure from here, you are already eager to be a business, an entrepreneur. Then we, this is what we will be able to do in this exercise upstairs, okay? Is every, I, there's one more thing. You have to pass by for your snack on the way out. Is it ready? Okay, I'm sorry. So don't worry about the snack. It will go where you go. Okay, thank you very much. We'll see you in Teramoy by 6 o'clock at the very latest, okay? Okay.